just checking the IV the out, and then we're going to be doing some ketamine. We're going to be doing about a milligram per kilogram of ketamine. Uh, this little girl's got herself a fractured two bones, kind of mid shaft of the radius and ulna after she fell today. So we did the timeout. Timeout's done. Mm -hmm. Okay. You ready for the ketamine? We're ready for ketamine. Okay. So a milligram per kilogram of ketamine going in. No, that one actually looks good. I'm going to put you right there. All right, so primarily apex dorsal deformity. I'm just going to give it a little push. Picture. Picture. Picture there. This tiny amount of residual deformity will try to make it better. So what exactly are you doing? Uh, to, to, you're putting pressure right over the injury and then distally you're pushing backwards, right? Right. Um, thumb right on the injury side just to give something to lever against. Picture. So we've got excellent alignment on the radiograph now. One more picture there. That was a fairly simple reduction. We'll just get her splinted right there. <coughs> so hold right on the fingertips, just to, uh, uh, how about other hand? It'll be a little easier. Yeah, perfect. A couple very simple splinting tips would be um, avoid any wrinkles or dimples in the webral as much as possible. <clears throat> the splint should extend all the way out to her uh, MCPs. Make sure there's plenty of padding there. If you use a uh, smaller width webral, it uh, is easier to lay down and go around corners on little kids and tight spaces. One of the viewers just asked if we could see the uh, uh, splint padding being put on and uh, from beginning to end. So this is perfect. Well, approximately and distally, um, I like to wrap between four and five times just to make sure we have a good edge so that the plaster doesn't irritate the skin. Okay. Avoid putting a uh, rebel or cast padding into the into the. <clears throat> inside of the splint. Um, you want to have excellent, good, strong padding on the, on, the, on the outside. So I always leave a space there. <clears throat> and why are you leaving that space? If you put say? a lot of cast padding, um, it can be irritating to the skin. Okay. Um, so just get good coverage at the elbow, and then I'll do one one layer just around the top just to make sure it gets covered. So, <clears throat> so multiple layers at both ends. Just make sure all your bony prominences are very well padded. I like to have my uh, splint material pre-measured purposely long because if you measure and tear it Prior to splinting, oftentimes your um, your plaster will end up short from the from the uh, thickness of the webral. Turn out a good thumb hole. You want your water to be <clears throat> cool to warm, but not hot. Um, you can uh, squeeze out the excess water over the bucket just so you don't make a mess. And then uh, after you squeeze the water out, then laminate the individual plaster leaflets. To one another. Basically a sugar tongue. This is a sugar tongue, yeah. Bring her down just a little. We want this to stay at 90 degrees. 
like to get my plastic uh, well molded and adherent to the Weber. And you can use wider Weberl on the top just to get coverage quickly. How are we doing up there? Fine. Here. Make sure you keep the barbed ends of the base wrap far away from the skin. It is irritating. I like to leave it long on top and bottom as I will eventually fold this ace wrap in. Again, keep the barbed ends well away from the skin. When you tuck it in, you can ensure that the plaster doesn't have any exposed edges. If you've done a good job with the web roll, it shouldn't be an issue anyway, but by tucking in the ace wrap, you can guarantee that it won't become a, an irritant to the skin. Good point. Mm -hmm. Make sure plaster goes all the way out to the NCPs. And then you want a good intraosseous mold right at the fracture site. And decrease the thickness as much as possible. Okay, let me take a couple pictures just to verify. Picture. picture there. Alright, so next little alignment there. At this point you just keep the elbow at 90 degrees. Put pressure at the fracture site for the good intraosseous mold as the pressure as the plaster sets up and that's all there is to it. The flatter the splint is the better the reduction is maintained. Right. If you put a splint on that's essentially a, uh, a cylinder mm -hmm. then there's more room for the deformity to recur. <clears throat> Alright, two more pictures, that should do it. Picture there. Okay. And picture there. And we thank Mom for letting us do Excellent. this video. Appreciate it. She knows it's going to end up on YouTube, but you'll have final say on it. That's all there is to it. Well, so thanks we'll so much. Post-reduction films, and um, if all looks good, she can, uh, she can head home after that. <laughs>